Come on, let's go! I want to beat the traffic! We're just making sure we got everything. If you are not here in five minutes, I am leaving without you. Sorry, Travis. I thought for sure they would be ready on time. It's okay, Mr. Williams. Sometimes you just have to wait for something good. Travis, when you get to be my age, you don't like waiting anymore. You never know when it might be your last time. Well, then let's make sure we have a good time then. Mom says five more minutes and she'll be ready. Go get your stuff into the car. I'm going to speed up your mom. I can't believe my dad agreed for you to come. He probably agreed so he wouldn't be the only male there. No, I think it is because he's worried about you. Worried about me? Everything that you've gone through the last couple of months. I'm okay. I think he wants to help clear your mind. Becky, I'm fine. But thank you for worrying about me. It's my job to worry about you. Will you always worry about me? I have a feeling I will. Okay, I got your mom. You two get in the back. Honey, can you help me with this bag? I got it, Mrs. Williams. Thank you, Travis. I hope you keep this one. <laughs> oh, I plan to, Mom. I plan to. Everyone in. Let's get this show on the road. I hope you are all ready for a good time. Tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way and Guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away As you fade away Good morning everyone, it's only Tuesday the day that means nothing. You know who I am. Let's check out the news, shall we? Man in boxers leads police on a brief chase. Uh. Survey finds fewer deer after hunting. Yesterday's strong winds blew Fiddler off the roof. And in traffic, if you're on I-82, you might be delayed for a while, as a truck carrying condoms jackknifed and lost its load. <laughs> But anyways, on with the show. So, today we are blessed to have in our presence a lovely lady, a woman who has put up with... Actually, I don't know what she has put up with. How are you today, Mrs. Clark? I'm in a good mood. Your news reports are really funny. <laughs> I just read them. Where do they come from? I don't know. I look at my screen and they're there and I read them. If you ever meet the writer... Please tell him that I like the news. <laughs> I'll remember that. Unlikely that we will meet, though. You never know. You're right about that. So, yesterday, you said that you were going to start telling us some stories. I think you were going to start in high school and work your way forward. People always try to start stories with some lame saying, like, once upon a time, or legend has it. Ever notice that? Travis used to say that most stories aren't true and usually don't start where you expect. They really start on some regular day with some regular person. This is one of them stories. I'll do my best at telling a story. I'm not as straightforward as Travis. I tend to wander. I'm sure that you'll be just fine. Travis and I just started dating a couple of months ago. 
I went over to his house to visit, and he was working in the barn with his dad. His mom was outside working on her flowers. Morning, Becky. Travis is in the barn. He's working on the tractor with his father. Morning, Mrs. Clark. Is he going to be long? I would assume at least an hour. Why don't you come inside? I'll fix you a glass of lemonade. So, Becky, how are your parents? How's school going? Any plans for the holidays? Oh, where are my manners? I promised you a glass of lemonade. Here you go. Thank you, Mrs. Clark. Here, sit down. So, how are you doing, Becky? I'm doing good, Mrs. Clark. How are you doing? I'm okay. I get a little tired, but I guess kids will do that to you. But it's worth it. I don't regret anything. I have my memories. Let me show you something. Take a look at these pictures. They're of Travis when he was younger. I flipped through the book and came across this one picture of Travis, his dad, and his grandfather. Travis was covered in dust and dirt, and there was a trail of blood coming from his nose going down his shirt. They were working on a fence. I stared at this picture. I remember that day well. Travis had a bloody nose after he broke the fence post and his father made him replace it. He looked so young. He was. But no matter how many times I told him to stop, he just kept on growing. <laughs> Why don't you take the photo? Oh, Mrs. Clark, I couldn't. That's your memory. Memories mean nothing if they can't be shared. And I want you to have this one. Mrs. Clark... I don't know what to say. Just promise me that you'll make memories and share them with the ones you love. Mrs. Clark? You're part of the family, Becky. Well, not yet, but I know that you will be. You and Travis have a future together. It just needs a little push here and there. Do you think so? Call it a mother's intuition. How's your lemonade? It's good. Becky, are you going to the game tomorrow? I plan on being there. Sit next to me. Okay. We can talk more. I miss having ladies talk. But I'll see you tomorrow then. I have to get back to my flowers. I think I hear Travis coming in. I'll let you two talk. Remember, Becky, make memories. Travis came in and saw me. He was covered in grease and sweat, but he still kissed me. He then went over to the sink and cleaned up. He then took off his shirt and- Oh, uh, Becky, remember that Kelly listens to this. He took off his shirt and put on a clean one. I stayed there for about two hours. We talked and talked and then he walked me home. I went to school the next day and then got ready for the football game. I don't know why Mrs. Clark wanted to sit next to me during the game, but I soon found out why. I remember going to high school football games. I don't remember any football being played as I was always looking at the cheerleaders or under the bleachers. <laughs> I was always on the sidelines taking pictures. I never sat in the stands, let alone with my boyfriend's mother. I was scared and nervous. 
I made my way into the game and found Mrs. Clark in the bleachers. I sat down next to her and soon the game started. Becky, thank you for sitting with me. Where's Mr. Clark and the rest of the family? No one goes to the games except for me. I try to go to them all, but some of the away games I can't make it to. Does Travis know you go to them? No. I don't want to make him nervous. I could have got closer to the field. You could have took photos with me. Thank you, but I feel that it is safer up here. They can't tackle me here. You saw that? Yes. I'm the one that called your parents to pick you up. Thank you. Oh, Travis is on the field now. It's a shame that his father can't see him. He is a really good player. Why doesn't he watch? It reminds him of what his life used to be. He was good, too. He had scholarships that he could have used. Many schools wanted him. But his father needed help, and so he put his life on hold and started a new one. It's a good life, but I don't think it is the one he wanted. Why are you telling me this? Because there will come a time where you will have to sacrifice what you want for what you need. I just hope that you make the right decision. His father did, but he doesn't know it. What about you, Mrs. Clark? Did you ever have to sacrifice? Yes, I did. And I will continue to sacrifice for my children as they are my world. I would do anything to protect them. Anything. Any thoughts on what the new one will be? No, not yet. I just hope that it's going to be loved and, and welcomed in the family. But why wouldn't it be loved? When your oldest brother is 18 years older, and your oldest sister is 16 years, there's a big gap in the family. I don't know how that will work. It works with Hunter. That's because of you. Because of me? I don't think Travis would care much about him if you weren't there. But I will do the same with the next one. You can't force family to love each other. You can try. I can't believe this is the last game of the season. I think next year, they will make it to the playoffs. I hope so. All I want for Travis is to win in life. I think he will do that. I'm going to get some popcorn. Do you want anything? I'm good. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And if you do, <laughs> take pictures. <laughs> As she got up and walked down the stands to the concession, I put my eyes on the field and watched the game. If I knew that this was going to be the last time she ever watched her son play, I would have tried to do something special. But I know that our time together, even though short, will always be etched in my memory. She came back and we finished watching the game together. Travis never knew his mom was at the games. I never told him either. Later on, when she was put on bed rest, I could still go over there, knowing that Travis wasn't there. We talked and looked at old photos together. I still hear her memories in every photo when I look at them today. So Travis never found out that his mother saw him play? Not until now. What do you think his mother would say to him right now if she could? She would say, Travis, I love you. I'm proud of the man you have become. You have exceeded my every desire in what you have done with your life. You have lived a full life, but it's time to come home. Words that could mean a lot coming from a mother. Are you crying again? I am not crying. Becky, it was an honor to hear this story. It was nice to hear about Mrs. Clark, as we don't know much about her. I look forward to other stories you have to share with us. It was nice to share it. That is what you do with memories. 
Whatever happened with all the photos? When Mr. Clark passed away, Jackson gave them to me. He didn't want them. Jackson gave them to you? A year after Mr. Clark passed, Jackson and I were cleaning out the house, and I saw them and asked if I could have them. He said, take them. They are trash anyways. You and Jackson? I was visiting my parents for the holidays, and he was selling off stuff and throwing away items that had no value to him. I helped him clean out the house and sell the things that were of no use to the household. I think, Becky, you are finally going to help us solve this puzzle of Travis and his life. I will do my best. Well, folks, that's all for today. Becky, thank you for coming in today, and I can't wait to see what story you'll tell us tomorrow. Thank you, everybody, and tune in next time. Up next is a DJ that's really new to the scene. Let's welcome DJ Kid. 